Good morning and welcome to the Rays of Light, Rainbows of Peace, Divine Will Prayer Cenacle. We're coming to you from the Cathedral of Our Lady of Walsingham, which is the cathedral seat for Bishop Stephen Lopes, head of the Ordinariate of the Chair of St. Peter in Houston, Texas. I'd like to invite all of you listening that if you're in the area on June 17th, I believe it is, yes, June 17th, uh, Father Huff, the pastor, is going to come visit our Cynical and be, be part of the Cynical that day. So if you're able to come in person, it'd be wonderful for you to meet the pastor who's given us permission to host our Cynicals here and let him meet you as well. So we are going to be continuing our lessons with uh, Father Celso on Louisa and marriage and the divine will. And it's kind of exciting that we're in the middle of this uh, teaching because Father did that special presentation through Radio Maria, presented uh, courtesy of Mary's Hill uh, this past Sunday, and it was wonderful. So Holy Spirit knows what he's doing. He wants us all to be on the same page. So let us begin now um, with our prayer cynical format in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus, come pray in our praying and make this cynical your command so that your kingdom be established and your divine will reign in the midst of creatures. We call all the heavenly court, all angels and saints to participate in all the divine will does in this cynical praying in the name of all creatures, past, present, and future. And today, as we try to quiet our souls through the gift of the Holy Rosary that the Blessed Mother's given us, um, we're going to try and enter into a spirit of silence and attentiveness, free from the worries and distractions of the world. And we pray that uh, Father Huff... Um, that his heart begins to burn with this divine will, that the divine will is actually calling him here two weeks from today, and that he'll want to continue to visit and, and study with us and eventually be our leader and guider if that's what, what the Lord's calling him to. And we pray that the Lord of the harvest send out workers into his harvest as Saint Anibale Maria de Francia reminds us, because he is our patron saint of our little group, and uh, Father Celso is our spiritual director of this group. So being Thursday, we do our Luminous Mysteries, and Lord, we just want to learn to live in your will and begin living in it um, in every moment of every time. Help us just to desire that, for you say that that is the first step. Help us to only want that which you want knowing and trusting and with hope and certitude that that is what is best. Obviously, your plan, it seems silly to even say, but <laughs> I find myself sometimes wondering that I have to turn back time and again, Lord, help me to want what you want, not my will, but thine be done. All right, so we have a new rosary today. Um, I stumbled across it. It this priest, um, Father Reed, at the time was a young, I think he was a seminarian, I'm not sure, he was living in Rome, but now he's a bishop, And but this is a, a, a video that someone has reposted up online um, where, where he leads this rosary, so it'll be my first time seeing it too, so let us enter um, in all joy and quietude into these luminous mysteries of the Most Holy Rosary. Fiat. All righty. That was very good. It's like nice to see a priest who's so filled with love and joy and certitude in his teaching. Um, sorry about that uh, thing at the end. Didn't realize there was going to be a plea for money to a certain location, but uh, fiat in the holy divine will. 
So we now move on to praying our prayer of consecration to the Holy Divine Will, as well as the glorification prayer of the servant of God, Luisa Picoretta, Fiat. Prayer of consecration to the Holy Divine Will. O oh, adorable and divine will, here I am before the immensity of your light, that your eternal goodness may open to me the doors and make me enter into it to form my life all in you, divine will. Therefore prostrate before your light, I, the littlest among all creatures, come, O oh, adorable will, into the little group of the first children of your supreme fiat. Prostrate in my nothingness, I beseech and implore your endless light, that it may want to invest me and eclipse everything that does not belong to you in such a way that I may do nothing other than look, comprehend, and live in you, divine will. It shall be my life, the center of my intelligence, the enrapturer of my heart and of my whole being. In this heart, the human will shall no longer have life, I shall banish it forever, and shall form the new Eden of peace, of happiness, and of love. With it I shall always be happy. I shall have a unique strength, and a sanctity that sanctifies everything, and brings everything to God. Here, prostrate, I invoke the help of the sacrosanct trinity, that they admit me to live in the cloister of the divine will, so as to restore in me the original order of creation, just as the creature was created. Celestial Mother, Sovereign Queen of the Divine Fiat, take me by the hand and enclose me in the light of the Divine Will. You shall be my guide, my tender mother. You shall guard your child and shall teach me to live and to maintain myself in the order and in the bounds of the Divine Will. Celestial Sovereign, to your Immaculate Heart I entrust my whole being. I shall be the tiny little child of the Divine Will. You shall teach me the Divine Will, and I shall be attentive in listening to you. You shall lay your blue mantle over me, so that the Infernal Serpent may not dare to penetrate into the sacred Eden to entice me and make me fall into the maze of the human will. Heart of my highest good, Jesus, you shall give me your flames, that they may burn me, consume me, and nourish me, to form in me the life of the supreme will. Saint Joseph, you shall be my protector, the custodian of my heart, and shall keep the keys of my will in your hands. You shall keep my heart jealously, and shall never give it to me again, that I may be sure never to go out of the will of God. Guardian angel, guard me, defend me, help me in everything, so that my Eden may grow flourishing, and be the call of the whole world into the will of God. Celestial court, come to my help, and I promise you to live always in the divine will. Amen. Prayer for the glorification of the servant of God, Louisa Picaretta. O August and most holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we praise and thank you for the gift of the holiness of your faithful servant, Louisa Picaretta. She lived, O Father, in your divine will, becoming under the action of the Holy Spirit, in conformity with your Son, obedient even to the death on the cross, victim and host pleasing to you, thus cooperating in the work of redemption of mankind. Her virtues of obedience, humility, supreme love for Christ and the church lead us to ask you for the gift of her glorification on earth so that your glory may shine before all and your kingdom of truth, justice and love may spread all over the world in the particular charisma of the Fiat Voluntas Tua, Sicut in Cielo et in Terra. We appeal to her merits to obtain from you, Most Holy Trinity, the particular grace for which we pray to you. 
with the intention to fulfill your divine will. Amen. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Queen of all saints, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This last prayer was composed by the late Archbishop Giovanni Battista Piccieri in Trani, October 29, 2005. May he rest in the eternal peace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Fiat. All right, and now we are here in the ordinariate in ordinary time. So we will begin a Thursday uh, ordinary time rounds, which will be Thursday mid morning. Thursday mid morning. Antiphon. Jesus, my love, my happiness for me is you alone. All other things hold no attraction over me. Round of creation, 10. Prayer. I want to seal everything with your will so that you may receive from everything the glory of your sanctity, of your love, of your power and so that all that is human may remain covered, hidden, marked by your will. May nothing, nothing human remain in which you do not receive divine glory. I worship you and I honor you through each movement of creatures. I worship you and I honor you in each act of creature. I worship you and I honor you in all the acts of creatures. I worship you and I honor you in all acts of creatures in the past. I love you. Your kingdom come, oh please let it be known, loved and possessed by the human generations. I worship you and I honor you in all acts of creatures in the present. I worship you and I honor you in all acts of creatures in the future. I worship you and I honor you everywhere where the divine will is present. I worship you and I honor you in every place where the divine will is present. I love you. Your kingdom come. Oh, please let it be known, loved, and possessed by the human generations. I worship you and I honor you in order to requite the supreme love. I worship you and I honor you for so much love toward the creatures. I worship you and I honor you for all. I worship you and I honor you with all. I worship you and I honor you in all. I worship you and I honor you in the hearts of all. I love you and pray you that your eternal fiat be known and just as it rains triumphantly in heaven, it may come to rain triumphantly in the midst of creatures. Prayer. O oh, Divine Will, how much you love me, so much that you want to give yourself always, without ceasing, to form your life in my poor soul. Your love is such that it besieges me with light, love, and sighs, 
to obtain the purpose. Antiphon How content and happy I am! I can tell you that your immensity is yours and mine, and I love you with immense love, with powerful love. Reading Volume 35, November 29, 1937 My good daughter, our love is such that everywhere and in every place, even in the most tiny blade of grass, in the air that the creature breathes, in the water she drinks, even underneath her steps as she treads the ground, we send our voices our spasming cries of love. I love you. I love you. I love you. But our love can't find peace, feeling that it's not listened to by the creature, and not hearing her repeating, I love you. I love you. And in our delirium of love we say, Oh, is anybody listening to us? Oh, nobody is saying to us, I love you, I love you. Why then say, I love you, I love you, if nobody returns it to us? To whom do we say, I love you? To the air? To the wind? To the empty space? Our I love you doesn't know where to go, where to lean. If it doesn't find the I love you of the creature to receive it and return it with her own, so that her love may find refuge inside our immense love, leaning on it and growing more and more. Responsory When the creature listens to our I love you and returns it, in our emphasis of love we say, Finally, we've been heard. You have reached the end of Thursday mid-morning. Fiat. All right, and now for the time that we've been all waiting for with great anticipation. It will be lesson three of uh, Louisa and Marriage in the Most Holy Divine Will, given by Father Thomas Celso. Fiat. So again, we have to <clears throat> we have to get um, ready for this great outpouring of the Holy Spirit uh, to um, get a clue of how close we are. And I don't mean to be a prophet, but um, uh, every time uh, the uh, every time there is a a major event in Israel, there's the blood moon, and the blood moon shows up when the uh, uh, the moon comes in front of the uh, the sun. Oh no, no, the the earth becomes in between the sun and the moon, and the moon turns a blood red. And uh, the next four blood moons <clears throat> begins next year. Uh, and the 14th and the 15th. And it happens, uh, uh, the Feast of Booze, the Feast of Succoth, the Feast of Tabernacles, this is in the fall, and Passover. Uh, so first it's Passover, next fall, next year at this time it will already have happened. And then the, then the following fall, or that fall, it will happen again. And then it happens on the 15th, 2015, again, uh, in, at Passover, and then in the, again in the fall, uh, during the Feast of Sukkot, the Feast of Booth, which is the Feast of Harvest. And there's always a major event that occurs. Now, God has always used the heavens. He says, you will see the signs and wonders in the heavens. You will see this happening, okay? There's also, next year in November, it's supposed to be this comet. It's supposed to go past us, go around the sun, and past us again. And that will be, um, this, the comet will be brighter than the moon. Uh, so there's signs and wonders in the heavens to prepare us for what is coming. Um, and so I'm not saying it's exactly going to happen then, but we have to know the time we are living in. It's very, 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 very close 
to the return of Christ. Now, how, why do I say that? Because 2,000 years ago, he says, I'm coming soon. And that was 2,000 years ago, so that's much sooner than it was then. So he's coming. Uh, and uh, he shows it in the heavens. Israel surrounded now, which Scripture says, all the nations will surround Jerusalem and uh, basically uh, threaten its destruction. Okay, and yesterday Israel attacked again Syria uh, at the uh, army depot there. So, um, you know, we, we have to understand, we can't just say, well, it's not happening. These are the times that Jesus warned us about. And if you, if you look, especially with Israel, and most especially because Louisa is in the Vatican, with that happening, the devil knows that his time is coming to an end. See, Louisa in volume 15 crushes the head of Lucifer. Our Lady crushes it, then Jesus says, I, then I want my daughter to crush it, to make sure. It's, it's not only done by the queen of heaven and earth, but the little daughter of the divine will, who was born of original sin. This is, this is the great time we're living in. So great things are right around the corner, and uh, we have to really pray this, this prayer. We have to know this prayer of any creator spiritus, and it has to become part of our life as the Salve Regina has become part of our life. The Our Father has become part of our life. Uh, this is very, very important, uh, and, and this cooperating in this, uh, you'll see great blessings. I just wanted to um, interject here and orient you to the time that this talk was given. It was in May of 2013. So when he speaks of these events, um, it is back in May 2013. All right. God bless y'all, Fiat. So on page six, the third marriage. Okay, now this third marriage is the marriage of the cross. Going back to the beginning when Jesus would deign to come, he would speak to me very often about his passion and that would take care in disposing my soul to the imitation of his life and as of pains, telling that in addition to the marriage, which is mentioned above, we had one more left to do and this was the marriage of the cross. So that's what God's doing with us right now. Uh, we, when we embrace the mystical marriage uh, at the beginning of the divine will, learning about it, it's very, very important. Um, uh, now Jesus is telling us to get ready for the, the grand marriage which is coming, the eternal marriage. But now it's, it's, he, he wants to tell us about this marriage of the cross. Okay, it's, This is what he's doing in our lives. Everyone is suffering spiritually, physically, mentally, emotionally, financially. Um, and we have to go through this. But if you're worried, fearful, anxious, complaining, negative, if you are panicking, you're not, you, you, you're not embracing the cross. The, the cross is fiat. It's just let it be done as you say. And it's total docility, whatever the Lord is asking. Remember that Jesus would say, my spouse, Louisa, virtues become weak if they are not strengthened and fortified, fortified by the grafting of the cross. Before my coming upon earth, pains, confusion, disgraces, calamities, sufferings, poverty, illness, and especially the cross were considered dishonors. But from the moment they were born by me, Jesus, they were all sanctified and demonized by my contact. They all change their appearance, becoming sweet, pleasant, and the soul who has the good of having some of them receives divine honors. That is, because she has received the vestments of me, Jesus, the Son of God. So uh, what we're going to have to understand is we have to go through sufferings. We have to. Now, if you're upset by them, you're not embracing the cross. And... Uh, it's fiat. Everything is fiat. If, if you're having a, a terrible time, fiat. Let it be done as you say. Total surrender. Now, if you sit in front of the Blessed Sacrament, when you're suffering, something that you don't understand, physical, spiritual, mental, emotional, financial, whatever, you sit in front of the Blessed Sacrament and you say, basically, I will sit here, Lord, until you give me your peace. You give me your calm. You give me your life. And, and the Lord will do that because he... Your cross is your life, and uh, uh, our job is to embrace our cross, to say fiat to God, let it be done as you say. Only those who look and stop at the cortex of the cross experience the contrary. Finding it bitter, they are disgusted by it. They complain as if someone had done them to, wrong to them. But those who penetrate into the cross find it enjoyable, find their happiness in the cross. My beloved daughter, I, Jesus, yearn for nothing else but to crucify you, both body and soul. 
So the Lord has crucified Louisa day in and day out. Why? Because when the Father finds somebody worthy who loves his son, who loves his uh, our blessed mother, he says, I want you to be like them. I want you to be crucified. Our Lady uh, co-redeemed with Christ because of her crucifixion at the, at the foot of the cross. You know, she sacrificed her son, which was her, if you want to say, her death, so that we could be saved, so that we could be redeemed. And uh, uh, again, Jesus said, if, if Our Lady, and Our Lady even says it, if, she was, if it was not the divine will, she would have died, uh, but the divine will kept her alive uh, for our sake. And, and again, so Jesus is calling us to crucifixion. This is where we have to go. Uh, and that's why what the Lord does is little by little, he takes everything away from us until finally he takes our breath, our heartbeat away. Uh, the Lord has to do this. Why? Because he has a glorified body for us. He has eternity for us. And if we are treasuring the things of earth, how sad that is. We have to let go of everything of the earth all our wants, all our desires, all our loves, so that he can be the Lord of our life. And while Jesus would say this, I would feel such infusion of yearning to for being crucified with Jesus that I would often repeat, my Jesus, my love, hurry, crucify me with you. Now that's our prayer. And uh, the Lord is waiting to hear that from you. Now if you think that your crucifixion would be as horrible as Jesus's. You know, you're fooling yourself. Jesus is the one who suffered the most. What he wants crucified is your human will, your worry, your fear, your anxiety, your complaints, your negativity, your sin. He wants that crucified. So when we say, hurry, crucify me with you, we have to understand that this is the human misery that has to die. And if we don't do not pray this prayer, it will not die. That has to die in, in purgatory, uh, where, it, where it will be burned out of you. Because uh, St. Thomas Aquinas says, the flames of purgatory are the flames of hell, but they're not eternal. So the, it would be the same suffering that the, the souls uh, would receive if they went to hell. I know, I know some people said, all I want to do is get to purgatory. That's all I care about. I don't want to go there. I want heaven. And it's the same thing. So you want, how do we get there? Jesus, my love, hurry, crucify me together with you. That's a prayer that we have to pray. We have to pray it and we have to mean it. It's just not words. Our human will has to be crucified. All our loves of this earth have to go. They have to go so that we can embrace the loves of heaven, the eternity of heaven. And when Jesus would come back, the first thing I would ask him, which seemed to be the most important to me, were these. Sorrow for my sins, the grace to be crucified with him. Sorrow for my sins and grace to be crucified with him. It seemed to me that if I obtained this, I would obtain everything. You see this divine truth. If you look at this humanly, you will run away from the divine will. I do not want to be crucified. Okay, maybe I don't want to sin. I want sorrow for my sins, but I don't want to be crucified. The divine will is not yours. You have to want to be crucified with him. Your human will has to be crucified with him, and you have to pray it. Don't be fooled that, well, Jesus said this, Luis is doing it, I don't have to do that. It doesn't work like that. Jesus has to see in you what he saw in Luisa. This is what Luisa prayed. This is what we pray. Then one morning, my beloved Jesus made himself present before me in this form of a crucifix, and he told me that he wanted to crucify me with him. And as he was saying this, I saw the rays of light which were coming out from his most holy wounds, and with those rays, nails, which were coming toward me. Okay, here, these are rays of light. Again, we see that image of Louisa in bed uh, with the rays of light penetrating her hands her feet, her heart, her, 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 uh, even the crucifixion, even the, excuse me, crown of thorns. At that moment, I don't know why, though I desired so much to be crucified with him, as to feel consumed, I was caught up by the great fear that made me tremble from head to foot. I felt such annihilation of myself. I saw myself so unworthy to receive that grace that I did not dare to say, Lord, crucify me with you. Jesus seemed to be suspended, waiting for my human will to say this who can tell how ardently I desire Jesus with 
in an intimate part of my soul, though at the same time I saw myself unworthy. My nature was frightened and trembled. But while I was in the state, my beloved Jesus, through the intellect, solicited me to accept. And then with all my heart, I said to him, Holy spouse, give me suffering, give me crosses. From this alone will I know whether you love me, if you contend me with crosses and with sufferings. Here's the next prayer again. This is, this is the marriage of the cross. This is the third prayer that God is asking us to pray, memorize it, and pray it. And th so those rays of light together with the nails pierced my hands and my feet so that my heart was pierced by a ray of light together with a lance. And who could tell the pain and, and the contentment? So this is what you have to understand. It's ecstasy. Uh, ecstasy can only be there through suffering. You cannot receive ecstasy without suffering. Uh, this, this pain uh, brings about ecstasy. And, and again, our God is asking us to want this pain. But what is the pain? It is to be with Jesus, to experience his suffering, his love, his life, his light. Okay, so this is what God is asking. You, you, it's to receive ecstasy. This is why she says, um, uh, uh, let's see. Uh, okay, so it says, so much is my soul caught up by fear before, so much did my soul swim in the sea of peace, of contentment, and of pain afterward. Seas of peace, oceans of peace. This is not the peace of the earth. This is not the contentment of earth. This is the contentment of heaven. Uh, again, and of pain. And what happens in this, and you can read it with the lives of the saints. They experience a glimpse of this. Um, what happens is that... Um, this ray of light uh, uh, brings about uh, such happiness uh, that you want the pain more than not wanting the pain. Because only through that pain will you experience the ecstasy. The pain I felt in my hands and my feet and my heart was so great I felt I was dying. I felt the bones in my hands and feet being shattered into most tiny pieces. And I felt as if there were nails inside. But at the same time, which caused me such contentment that I cannot express it, this is ecstasy, gave me such strength, and this is divine strength, that while I would feel like dying because of the pain, those very pains would sustain me and I would not die. How, nothing, however, appeared on that external parts of the body as though I felt corporal pains. And this is so true that when the confessor would come to call me to the obedience and would loosen my hands, which were contracted. Every time he would touch me at that, at that point of my hands, which had been pierced through by the rays of light together with the nails, I would feel mortal pains. However, when the confessor would command by obedience that those pains cease, they would mitigate very much. In fact, those pains were so strong that they made me lose consciousness. And if it had not been mitigated by, at the call of obedience, I could hardly have been able to obey. O oh, prodigy! of holy obedience. You have been everything for me. How many times have I found myself clashing with death? So great was the intensity of the pains that and obedience was almost restored. Uh, obedience has almost restored my life. May the Lord be always blessed. May everything be for his glory. Okay, so it's, uh, this is not normal. Uh, the Lord is asking us to embrace the 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 life of Jesus. This is not human suffering. This is not human pain. It's divine pain, divine suffering. Uh, and and our, what our Lord is asking of us is just to give our fiat. Let Him have His way with us, not not to interfere with what He wants. Now, while being and again, the Lord will offer this to you, uh, but if you reject it, He He's not going to come back. He's already offered it to you. And if you reject it, it's gone. You know, that's, that's, a, that's a warning. Um, now, while being inside myself, I could not see anything, but when I would lose consciousness, I would see the points marked by the wounds of Jesus. And it seemed to me that the very wound of Jesus had been transmuted in, transmuted in my hands and in the rest. And this was the first time that Jesus crucified me. Okay, so this transmutation 
is she she received the hands of Jesus. They are not Luisa's hands anymore. It's Jesus's the hands in his the holes in his hands, in his feet, in her side is now are now Luisa's. She has been transmuted. Uh, that means uh, inside and out. It's no longer uh, hers. It's it's God's, and that's what God wants. He wants to transmute us in Him. He says, and in the rest, this was the first time Jesus crucified me. Indeed, there had been many so many so many of these crucifixions that it is impossible to count them all. Uh, impossible to count them count them all. I would just say that the main thing about is, I would just say the main things about this. Now, as Jesus would come back, I would say to him, Dear my beloved, give me sorrow for my sins, so that, consumed by sorrow and by regret for having offended you, my sins may be erased from my soul and also from your memory. Okay, here's another prayer that is very, very, very important. We want our sins to be erased from our soul. We do not want to go through the temporal punishment due to sin, and because of the feast of divine mercy, God is doing that. He's leading us to this life that Louisa possessed, this true life of Jesus, the true life of Mary. Yes, give me such sorrow for as much as I have dared to offend you. Even more, let sorrow surpass this so that I may draw more intimately close to you, Jesus. This is this closeness that we want with Jesus. We, we do not want to be far from him any longer. Well, we want him to reign in us. So it's the the word I, me, and mine has to go. Uh, we we don't talk about my memory, my will, my things. That's that's all gone. What we talk about is the glory of God. We don't even talk about the saints. They're nice. They're wonderful. They're beautiful. They're saintly. They're holy. But Jesus is saying, I want you to live the life of Louisa in my image and likeness. The saints possess possess the image. Now Jesus is saying, I want you to possess my likeness. So the Lord is asking us, pleading with us, to let go of the things of the world in order to embrace, embrace the things of heaven. What are the things of heaven? They're of Jesus and Mary. Who possesses the things of Jesus and Mary? It's Louisa. That's why we go to Louisa, so we can possess the things of heaven. I remember once that while I was saying this, my always benign Jesus told me, Since you, Louisa, are so sorry for having offended me, and I myself want to dispose you to feel sorry for your sins, and that you may see how awful sin is and what a bitter pain my heart suffered, therefore say together with me. Now, this is another prayer. If I cross the sea, you are in the sea, though I do not see you. If I tread on the earth, you are under my feet. Why? Because I have sinned. See, Jesus wants us to be with him. Uh, he wants us to recognize how close he is to us. And then a low voice, almost crying, Jesus added, And yet I, Jesus, love you, Louisa, at that very moment when you sinned. And I, Jesus, preserved you, Louisa, at that moment when you sinned. So again, our, our God wants us to turn back to him uh, and to re repair, redo for all the sins, uh, not only of our life, but our family's life, of the world life. So again, don't get angry with people, uh, but to repair, uh, repair and redo. That's our job. Uh, don't When you watch TV, don't start screaming at the TV because somebody's doing something that is maybe communist or uh, whatever. You just say, Lord, thank you for showing me this. Number one, I'm sorry it's happening to you. L Lord, number two, and number three, I want to repair this, redo this as if it never happened. So again, you could be like everybody else uh, or you can be what Jesus has shown Louisa. And while I was saying this, I together with Jesus, I was caught up by such sorrow for the offenses given that I fell flat to the ground and Jesus disappeared. Again, this prostration is very, very important. This is the second time we read this today. She prostrated herself before the Lord. Again, it's important to do that, but don't do that with anybody around. You know, don't, that's, 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 that's you know, I, I saw that when I was in Washington. The, a couple of ladies came in and they, they prostrated in front of the Blessed Sacrament. And it was like, you know, I wanted a drum roll at that point. You know, it, it's just, it's, it's a waste of time. You, you do this in your privacy. You don't do this in public. You don't, you pray in private. You don't pray in public. You know, you make sure that you're alone with God. 
Uh, that's what Jesus says. So if you do anything to show how pious you are, you receive your reward. You know, it's, it's a waste of time. So again, always, you know, you, you pray in private. Don't let anybody see you praying. Uh, again, that doesn't mean when somebody's there you don't pray, but it's just you know what I mean. You just you, you don't you don't flaunt yourself, you know. Here are here are those words. But I understood so many things, and that is impossible to say all that I comprehended. In the first words, I comprehended the immensity, the greatness, the presence of God in each existing thing. That's what we find when we do the round of creation and the round of well, it's the round of creation, and such that not even a shadow of our thought can escape Him. I also understood my nothingness compared to the grand majesty so great and so holy. In the word I sinned, I understood the ugliness of sin, the malice, the daring that I had in, had in offending Jesus. And now while my soul was considering this, in hearing Jesus Christ say, and yet I, Jesus, loved you, Louisa, at the very moment I, Jesus, preserved you, Louisa, my heart was taken by such sorrow that I felt I was dying because I could understand the immense love that the Lord had for me in the very act in which I tried to offend him and even to kill him. Ah, Lord, how good you have been with me and I, always ungrateful, uh, am still so bad. I remember that it was an alt, uh, alter, uh, alter, alternation every time he would come, he would deign to come. I would ask him now for sorrow of my sins and now for the crucifixion. Okay, so these are the two things that we're going to be asking Jesus from now on. Sorrow for our sins and for crucifixion. I want my human will to be crucified. I do not want to give life to my human will. And you will give life to your human will until it is crucified, until it is with Jesus on the cross. You will give life to your human. If you're, if you're, going, to, if you're going to confession for the same thing over and over and over again, it's because you have not crucified your human will to the cross with Jesus. It's still alive. It's still in charge. And there's nothing you can do about that. It will always be in charge. It will always be leading you into sin until it's crucified with Jesus. So again, this is the great blessing that God has given us. He's asking us to embrace this marriage of the cross. He's asking us to really uh, be one with Christ crucified. What does that mean? Again, giving up your human will. So the divine will reigns. You live now in the resurrection of Christ, the peace, the joy, and the happiness of God. As for one, as for example, one morning, as I, while I was in my usual sufferings, my dear Jesus transported me outside of myself and showed me a man who had been killed by shots from a revolver, and who was then breathing his last and going to hell. Oh, how much pain it was for Jesus, the loss of the soul. If the whole world knew how much Jesus suffers for the loss of souls, they would use all possible means so as not to become lost eternally. And I'm not saying for themselves, but at least to spare our Lord that pain. Now, while I was in the midst of the bullets together with Jesus, Jesus drew his lips close to my ears and told me, My daughter, do you want to offer yourself as victim for the salvation of the soul? to take upon yourself the pains which he deserves because of his very grave sins. And Louisa answered, Lord, I am ready as long as you save him and restore his life. Who can tell the sufferings that came to me? They were such and so many that I myself don't know how life did not leave me. Now again, that's what Jesus gave to Louisa. That's not what he's giving to us. Uh, the three that suffered were Jesus, Mary, and Louisa. That's why... Jesus says, the one on my right is my mother who suffered more than any soul next to me. The one on my left is you, Louisa, who suffered more than any soul next to my mother. So uh, again, uh, now if we are with Jesus and Mary through Louisa, uh, we can repair and redo in the name of everyone and everything past, present, and future. Uh, so I wouldn't be afraid of this. Again, uh, the Lord has great plans. All he needs is our cooperation. I under, also understood the words that our Lord said to his beloved souls. I, Jesus, will expose you, uh, excuse me, espouse you in the faith. It means nothing less that the Lord Jesus in his mystical marriage comes to endow the souls with his very own virtues. It seems to me that it happens as to two spouses. 
As they join their properties together, the belongings of the one can no longer be distinguished from those of the other, but both of them become their owners. So that's, again, that's what God is doing with us. Everything becomes one with God. Everything becomes uh, in God's, with God's image and likeness. Uh, again, it's very, very clear that what is God's is ours. What is ours is God's. So as you enter into this ocean of the divine will, uh, what the Lord does at that point is he brings about your nothingness to possess everything of God. That's why he breathed into Adam, so Adam would receive divinity. He breathed in this, this image and likeness of God into dust, and the dust became a human. The dust became the father of, of, of mankind. And that father of mankind lost everything because of his disobedience. So Jesus and Mary have to come to earth. The mother of God, the son of God, come to earth to redeem us because the, the fall, this divinity was lost. So the divine had to come to earth. The queen of heaven and earth who never sinned and Jesus, the, the son of God who's never sinned. And they come and they redeem us. Now, 2,000 years later, they breathe into Louisa the life that Adam lost. And, and God says, now, I want to breathe this life into you. I want you to share in my divinity. So that's why we consecrate ourselves to Jesus and Mary before we are conceived uh, we say to the Lord, before I was conceived, I consecrate my life to you in my nothingness so that you can breathe into this dirt abundant life. Breathe into this dirt the preternatural life. And, and God's going to breathe in us and we are going to receive that preternatural life. And this is not a good life, a holy life, a saintly life that the saints breathed in because they were in their human will, because they did not consecrate themselves before they were conceived. They did not have Louisa to do this. We now have Louisa to do this. So where the saints became saints uh, because of basically like the DNA in their, of their parents, their grandparents, their great-grandparents, it's in them. So they fought all that to become saints. Good, holy, saintly lives. Well, Jesus says, now I want to give you more. I want to give you abundant life. So I consecrate yourself to me before you were conceived in your nothingness, so I can breathe into this nothingness, this abundant life that I had planned for all of Adam's children. How is this going to happen? Because Louisa is now the mother of the second generation of the children of light. Louisa is now, because of her, uh, because of her fiat, we can possess it. That's why, again, as you read Louisa, your life becomes happier. As you, as you read the book of heaven, you let go of the holy things. You have a holy uh, uh, distance from everything. You, 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 you begin to live an abundant life of peace, joy, and happiness. Uh, again, this is what God is asking of us. He's pleading with us to, to embrace this. He says, However, in the case the poor, the, the, soul, the soul is poor, all goods comes from the Lord who lets her share in his possessions. Okay, so we have nothing. We possess everything that is of God, but more so now than the saints. Okay, nobody possesses this fullness yet. The Holy Father will be the first one. When he possesses this gift, what is bound on earth is bound in heaven. The key that he will use is Louisa. He will open the doors of the kingdom, and then the kingdom of God will be on earth as it is in heaven. This is why the time we're living in is spectacular. Not only because Louisa lived at this time, but the writings are now on the earth. The writings are spreading on the earth. It can't be stopped, as, uh, as uh, Archbishop Picheri says. It's like you know, trying to put uh, 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 everything back into the bottle. It's, it's out. It's, you know, there's, no way to, there's no way to bring this back. And, and I'll tell you, honestly, we, I thank God that we have the writings. Uh, I'm sorry that there was disobedience, that, that people took the writings without permission. But God will use this sin to bring about goodness, to bring about his, his divine life. Volume 7, uh, 727-06. This morning, my adorable Jesus made himself seen embracing the cross, and I thought in my interior... What were his thoughts in receiving the cross? And he said to me, my daughter, Louisa, when I, Jesus, received the cross, I, Jesus, embraced it as my dearest treasure because in the cross I dowered souls and exposed them to myself. 
Okay, that's what I said. His contract with uh, us is his precious blood. He shed every drop of his blood. He paid for us. Uh, why? Because, as he says here, he, he, he has espoused himself to us. He, he has proposed to us. And it's very important that we accept this uh, uh, proposal and to, and to wait for the Lord. You know, you light the candle. This is what the woman did. She lit the candle and she waited for the Lord, waited for his return. Every day, the candle was lit in the house at night, waiting for the return of the groom. Okay, what's this lighting the candle? That's to live a life of prayer, to live a life of, of a readiness, not to be a foolish virgin, uh, but to be a, uh, um, a, 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 a smart one. Now, upon looking at the cross at its length of the breath, I, Jesus, rejoice because I, Jesus, saw it, in it sufficient dowries for all my spouses, and none of them could fear not being able to marry me because I, Jesus, held in my own hands in the cross the price of their dowry. But with this condition alone, that the souls accept the little gifts which I, Jesus, sent to her, which are the crosses. So these are gifts. Who's... Who's uh, going through suffering? All of us. Worry, fear, anxiety, complaints, and negativity is not part of suffering. It's, it's fiat. Uh, any suffering that you have, physical, spiritual, mental, emotional, financial, is fiat. God is in charge. I am not going to worry. Worry says to Jesus, I do not trust you. Worry says to Jesus, I cannot believe that you're going to help me, so I have to worry. No, our life is fiat. Let it be done as you say. Our life is let it let it happen as you want. So I, Jesus, sent her, which are the crosses, as pledge of her acceptance of me as her spouse. The marriage is formed, and I, Jesus, give her the gift of the dowry. When, if then she does not accept the gifts, the crosses, that is, if she does not, if she is not resigned to my holy divine will, everything is undone. And even I, Jesus, want to, even if I want to dower her, I cannot, because in the order. In order to form a marriage, it always takes the will of both sides. And since the soul does not accept my gifts, it means that she does not want to accept the marriage. So again, what are the gifts of this marriage that God is asking of us? It's the cross. Okay. If you are worried, you're not, you, 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 you're not accepting the gift. If you're fearful, you're not accepting the gift. It's always fiat. I trust you, I believe in you, I hope in you, I have confidence in you. Again, Christian hope is certitude. I am certain that you, Lord, are going to take care of this situation. Even though it is impossible, I am confident in you. That's, that's what the Lord wants to see. That's, I really believe that you are my spouse. You are God Almighty. And you're going to take care of every situation. This and every situation. Volume 8, 8, 10, 08. My daughter, Louisa, nothing has diminished the goods that exist between me and you because the whole of good is in the origin of its foundation. When two people unite themselves, when two persons unite themselves with a bond of friendship or with a bond of marriage and that they have exchanged gifts besides, they have loved each other so much as to become inseparable to the extent that one has taken and copied the other so much as to feel the the being of the beloved within her herself, if out of bare necessity they are forced to be uh, far away from each other, are those gifts perhaps diminished? Uh, does their love decrease? Not at all. On the contrary, being far away makes them grow more in love and makes them keep the gifts re received with greater care, waiting for some greater ex unexpected gifts, uh, gifts, at the return of the other. Boy, that was a tough one. So here is Jesus is saying, if you do this humanly, how much more divinely is he going to do this? Uh, this, is, this is, you are not alone. You're never alone. If, you, if you're living in the divine will, Jesus is right there. He's in your heart. The triune God is in your heart, as we read earlier. God wants to give you ecstasy. God wants, he's giving you this proposal. Uh, again, he gives you the gifts. What are the gifts? They're crosses. So if we do not understand Christ crucified, we will reject the crosses. And, and, and that's what the Lord is saying. Don't reject these. 
He says, but there is more. Since one has copied her beloved within herself, it seems that there is no distance for her because she feels the voice of the beloved flow within her voice, having imitated him. She feels him flow in her mind, feels him flow in her works, feels him flow in her steps. And that's, that's where we have to be one with Jesus. We have, to, we have to hear Jesus in our mind. We have to hear him. We have to see him. We have to experience him. How? Calm divine will. Come breathe in my breathing. Calm divine will. Can gaze in my gazing. Calm divine will. Reign in me. Otherwise, as Our Lady said, all that you can expect is suicide. The rise in suicide, again, why is it happening? Because people do not want Jesus or Mary. They do, want, do not want the divine life. And so the devil's there, and what does the devil want? Suicide. So uh, there will be more, more of this happening. Our job is to repair and redo, even those that have committed suicide. Lord, I want to repair their life as if they never doubted you. I want to redo their life. I want to do all lives, past, present, and future, so that they can be in heaven with, that, with, with you. So that you see, you, Lord, deserve their praise. You, Lord, deserve their adoration. And, and so we, we want everybody there for why? For the glory of God. Okay. She feels him flow with her mind and her works and her steps. So he is far and near. She looks at him and he escapes her. She touches him but cannot clasp him. Therefore, the soul is in a continuous martyrdom of love. Now, if, the ju if justice forces me to be deprived of you, you, Luis, of me, and to be far away for some time, can you, Luisa, say that I, Jesus, have taken the gifts away from you, Luisa, and that there is uh, the dim diminution of love? And it's, it's, it's true. It, he wants us to be with him. Uh, he wants us to trust in him. Now, he's given us an opportunity. Because of the Internet, we have the writings. Because of the Internet, we can be with Jesus in front of the Blessed Sacrament. Because of the Internet... You can go to Lourdes. You can go to Fatima. You can look at Lourdes. You can be you can be at the cave of Lourdes. You can be in the piazza of uh, the Vatican. You can be in in Fatima. You can be at um, you know wherever you want to be. And and the Lord has given us the internet so that we can pray. Uh, you know the Kindle, the the iPad, uh, the iPhone. All this stuff is for the glory of God. Now you can jam it packed with other other stuff. Or you can focus on this gift. Now, the devil wants you to be mesmerized uh, by illusion. And our job is to say, that's really nice, it's, but I do not want to be trapped in this. We have to, we have to focus on what is, what is the proposal? What does Jesus want? And it's very clear. He wants to marry us. It is right. Uh, volume 13, 12, 5, 21. It is right, it is necessary that I, Jesus, speak about you, Louisa. It would be nice if the bridegroom who is about to marry his bride were forced to deal with others, but not with her. While it is necessary that they confide their secrets to each other, that one know what the other has, that their parents provided this couple with a dowry, and that they become used to each other, uh, each other's way in advance. And I, tell me my life, who is my family? What is my dowry and yours? And smiling, Jesus continued, your family is the Trinity. Don't you remember that the first years of bad, I, Jesus, took you to heaven and we celebrated our union before the most holy Trinity. Now, that's our family. Our family is the holy Trinity. We, we are to, we are being, we've been proposed to by God to enter into this family of God. Now, the saints, Jesus says, surround the holy Trinity. That's where the saints are. The saints are beautiful. He says they're like stars surrounding the Holy Trinity. The children of the divine will enter into the Trinity to be part of the Son, the Son of God, the Son, the, the triune God. Now, if you love the saints, you could stay on the outside if you want. Or you could say, I want to be with Louisa. I want to be into the center of the Son. He says, uh, she says, your family is the Trinity. Uh, the Trinity endowed you with such gifts that you, Louisa, yourself have not yet known them. And it's the same thing with us. 
And I, Jesus, speak to you, Louisa, about my most holy divine will, about its effect and value. And I, Jesus, make you discover the gifts with which from that time you, Louisa, were endowed. And it's all, we are with Louisa. So it's the same thing with us. If we are linked to Louisa, this belongs to us. I, Jesus, do not speak to you about my dowry because what is mine is yours. And then after a few days, we, the three divine persons, descended from heaven, took possession of your heart and formed our most holy trini trinity's perpetual dwelling in your heart, Louisa. We, the most holy trinity, took the reins of your intelligence, of your heart, and all of, of you, Louisa, and everything you, Louisa, did was an outpouring of our divine love, our creative will over you, and the confirmation that your human will was animated by an eternal divine will. Okay, so this is where we are. And, and if you are with Louisa, what he said to Louisa is ours. Now, do you want this or not? If you want this, then this paragraph, you have to sit in front of the Blessed Sacrament and study this. Let Jesus explain each word to you. Let Jesus show you how much he loves you uh, because he's calling you to be linked with his little daughter, the newborn, the firstborn. He's calling you to be linked to this, this little newborn so that the kingdom can be established in you on earth as it is in heaven. So we'll end there in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Okay, wow. Um, let us pray. O oh God, the bestower of the third fiat and lover of man's sanctification, we humbly beseech your clemency. Grant that all souls, past, present, and future, through the intercession of Our Lady, Mother and Queen of the Holy Divine Will, St. Anibale Maria de Francia, and the servant of God, Luisa Picaretta, may attain to the fullness of life in the Holy Divine Will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. And may the souls of the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. And all together, glory be to God. So our prayer cynical has now officially come to a close. However, remember, we carry within ourselves what we've learned in order to begin living fused with it in our personal environments, agreeing to allow his will and not ours to reign. Fiat. And we are in the seasonal, uh, Marian seasonal song. Our closing hymn is Salve Regina. Fiat, and we'll see you next week. Amen. Salve Regina.